okay so we'll be adding products I've already gone ahead and created some items we have 18 items here I'm just gonna add two items there to bring it to 20 and first one would be cheese tricks and bag juice so there we have 20 items and we'll be working with those 20 items QuickBooks however requires that we have some other fields that we input such as description we're going to create a column description let's put it in bold and I'm going to use the same thing that we have used for item for description however the description is intended to be more detailed for the purposes of this training I will not add details to the description for instance, I could have, for the water, I could have the actual milliliter there. Say, for instance, 250 ml or milliliter. Same applies for the cranberry water. And for the sandwich biscuits, we could add the actual grams anything that it would be unique to the product to that particular product you can put it in the description basically you are describing what the product is so all the attributes of the product can be put in the description column we are going to go ahead and add three more fields and uh, three more columns I should say first one is going to be the cost and that is how much you have paid for these items and we are going to have the price how much you intend to sell these items for and you are going to have quantity QuickBooks would basically calculate the value of your inventory based on your cost price and the quantity because your value would be basically the and I'm going to just add value okay We are going to put in a simple formula to calculate the value. And the value would be cost times the quantity. I'm going to drag this down. And we are going to put in some prices. These prices may not be current. Because I have not 
done research as it relates to the price for these items and the prices for these items for demonstration purposes are not relevant the correct prices that is the concept is what is relevant so we are going to go ahead and add bun so we are going to put it for sixty dollars and we are going to add cheese I'm going to put it for seven dollars that's slice and in description we could put in bracket slice soda we will say And I'm working with some rounded figures. You may not have rounded figures to work with. So let's say soda costs seventy five and water costs thirty five. And cranberry water cost. Fifty. And beef patty cost. Ninety. Cheese patty. A hundred. Donuts. would cost about $30 each sandwich biscuits about 25 chocolate chip cookies I'd say 40 cupcakes say 50 fruit juice I would say 60 slice cake I would say 70 for that one Chocolate, I would say 80. Animal crackers, I would say 50. Oreo, I would say 80. 80 for that one. And let's lower this one a little for 60. Sugar bun, let's say 50. Cheese Danish, say 55. Cheese tricks, let's say 20. Bag juice, let's say 10. So we basically have our cost. Let's say John Brown basically makes a markup of 30%. On all items sold so we're going to put in a simple formula to arrive at price so price equal to cost times 1.30 and so you'd find 30% so basically But those prices seem a bit low. So um, we are going to do a revision of the formula to 40%.
okay so there we have it and we're in the format even though the figures are rounded I like to see the decimal places behind them we're going to say use two decimal places right and what we are going to do now is to add our quantities so we are going to based on John John Brown's or John Shop's stock count we are going to look at the quantity that is there so for buns we are going to say John has 35 bonds in stock and 55 slices of cheese 120 sodas 120 water, bottled water that is you could add that in the description And let's say we have hundred cran water and we have forty eight patties. As you can see as I go along the value of the stock is being calculated. So we have 52 cheese patties and we have 72 donuts in terms of sandwich biscuits John has 65 30 chocolate chip cookies dozen cupcakes 24 fruit juice all right fruit juices 36 slice cakes 48 chocolates 32 animal crackers dozen Oreos and let's say we only have six sugar bun eighteen cheese Danish forty eight cheese tricks and hundred and twenty hard juice. We're gonna do a total to arrive at the stock balance and the value of the stock because in using QuickBooks you need to have the value of your stock it's very important for your balance sheet because you definitely need to at any point in time have 
is including it, in, included rather in your statement of financial position in terms of the business. Your stock is a part of your assets and therefore it is very important that John Brown periodically do a stock counts and have the, his inventory or the stock correctly evaluated so the balance sheet can reflect a true balance so next we are going to basically get these items in yeah so we are going to go ahead and paste these items in QuickBooks so we just go to Excel and copy these items we are going to do that column by column so we'll take the items column first so we'll highlight it we have all 20 items there we'll copy and we will paste by using the control V command there you have the items just scroll down to see that they are all there and you move to the next column to the description column and you copy and you paste we're going to do the same thing for price copy and paste using the control V command we'll go back to cost we'll copy and paste we have we have our scene here let's check all the items are basically in and as you have seen demonstrated earlier where Microsoft Excel have actually calculated the total value of the inventory QuickBooks works similar in this regard but the fact is this formula is programmed in QuickBooks so we don't have to enter a formula what we have to do right now is to enter the quantity or the quantities on hand and the value of the stock will be calculated so we calculate in the stock there um, I would not say was relevant but it accounting is all about checks and balances this is John Brown's manual records so we are trying to convert it to, a, to an electronic um, accounting system so we are going to paste the quantities We select this and there you have it all the items are there so let's take a quick look at the value and we are basically corresponding so we'll select continue basically once you have selected continue if all is well you should not get any message that you need to fix anything but if something is wrong QuickBooks is going to prompt you to go back and 
make the necessary corrections. So I'm going to select continue and basically 20 items are ready to be added and zero items need fixing. We have no duplicates and we have no items that already exist in the system. So we're going to select continue. Taking a little while, here's a number of items, and next we are going to add bank accounts. 